All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, so this is the session that we're doing on our AI Builder Toolkit. So there's um, basically it's our uh, process that we think is going to be in place for um, customers dealing with paper processes. So hopefully this is the right session for you. If not, uh, there's another parallel session going on. So let's get started. So a couple of housekeeping items. We don't have a lot of people. Feel free to put yourself on mute. Um, if you have questions, ask them in the chat box and we'll uh, answer them um, as we go or towards the end. Um, if you um, have additional questions afterwards, you can uh, join conference uh, teams channel. You can add, talk later in the chat. You can send us an email. And eventually when we edit these videos, we'll distribute them probably back on the same conference website that you've been using to log on to the various sessions. Uh, some of the stuff will trickle out onto YouTube and LinkedIn. So make sure um, that you're following us on those as well. And then towards the end, we'll also cover what other sessions are remaining for the rest of today. So why are we here? So paper is unavoidable, right? It's a ubiquitous part of many operations, what people do. It's lightweight, durable, simple to use. It's an established tool. People know, you know, pen and paper. But it scales poorly. It requires a lot of manual handling. It's difficult to collaborate with multiple people. It doesn't provide a lot of insight unless it's being digitized and hinders or at least slows down decision making for people that have a lot of paper. So we're aiming to find a way to make the conversion of paper uh, a breeze. Uh, we want to make it data. We want to make it real. We want to make it usable so that your reporting improves. So we think we can do that with uh, Microsoft Power Automate, AI Builder, and iTrack product. And hopefully through this demo, you'll see that it is actually not that difficult to do. So me, myself, I am Tom. I am the customer success manager. I've been with iTrack for less than a year. And I come from a previous background of doing all sorts of software stuff, PM implementation, system admin, consulting, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, with me, who's going to be doing most of the technical bit is uh, Tian. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Go ahead. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Tian Specht. I'm a senior developer. I've been uh, with iTrack for around a year as well. I have 20 years of experience in the software development industry and full stack development experience across a wide variety of languages, frameworks, and platforms. Awesome. So uh, the agenda is uh, we're going to touch a bit on the technology. So what is Power Automate? What is AI Builder? What is robotic process automation? How do those things come together? Then we're going to play a 10 minute demo video, uh, which covers kind of how those things come together. And then towards the end, we'll talk about what we think are the benefits of a toolkit like this, uh, give you some real world examples where we think this can be used, and then talk about the feasibility of this tool set. So go ahead, Jan. All right. Um, yeah, first of all, I'd like to give a brief uh, introduction to Power Automate. Uh, Power Automate um, was formerly known as Microsoft Flow, and it lets you create automated workflows to implement business processes. It can be used to automate uh, tedious manual processes or enable business logic. Uh, workflows can easily be created using a drag and drop web based interface. If you see this uh, screenshot over there on the right, that's an example of a flow in Power Automate. Um, Power Automate also has the ability to integrate with over 300 existing services using pre built connectors and actions. Uh, some of the more popular connectors are Office 365 Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Teams, and RSS feeds. A few of the other interesting ones that I've you know, seen in their interface are LifeX, which lets you control uh, LifeX smart lights, Ethereum blockchain to integrate with smart contracts, and VirusTotal to scan a file uh, for viruses. But again, there are many more available. Um, Power Automate also integrates with AI Builder to easily add artificial intelligence to all of your flows. Um, you can also use a feature called robotic robotic uh, process automation to integrate with existing desktop or web-based apps. Uh, if we can get the next slide. All right, um, the next technology I'd like to touch on is AI Builder and what exactly it is. Um, it's basically a new tool from Microsoft. It was just released for general availability at the start of April 2020. 
And it's designed to allow businesses to harness the power of AI without requiring specialized coding or data science skills. And it can basically plugs in and can be used by Power Automate to automate manual processes um, using a combination of AI recognition and that robotic process automation again. Um, it also contains a specialized processing model that can identify and extract field and table based data from forms. So this, this is actually the part that um, we'll be using um, in this uh, demo here. And in the screenshot here, you can see a sample form that was used to train the AI builder model. And below it, you can see the resulting fields that the AI builder was able to recognize and extract automatically from the form. And AI Builder also has the ability to predict outcomes based on historical data. Um, it works with low or no code uh, power apps and is able to recognize text and visual information from your camera or pictures. Um, a few other features that AI Builder has is are the ability to extract key talking points from text. It can also detect the language being used in a block of text and it can perform sentiment analysis where it'll tell you the positive or negative uh, sentiment of text that you feed into it. Um, next slide, please, Tom. All right, and the next technology I wanted to touch on is robotic process or automation. Um, this is basically um, a, cap a capability, again, of Power Automate that lets you automate manual processes in desktop or web-based applications. It basically gives you the ability to easily integrate with existing systems that don't already have some sort of, you know, built in API or, or way to automate them. And what you can do with it is basically record user interface flows um, like you can record mouse clicks, keyboard inputs and the entry of data. And then once you've done that, you can customize the flows and play them back with different data values to automate data input. Um, also, um, there's some um, you can connect um, or all connections between Power Automate and your local apps for this automation are protected with Microsoft security technology to make sure that all of your data is kept safe. And uh, there are both attended and unattended automation options available for the robotic process automation. The attended automation runs while you're logged into your computer, so you sometimes you'll see something pop up and you know things will be going on on your screen. And there's also an unattended mode where, which is a little bit better for batch processing, where everything sort of runs in the background without ever, anyone needing to be logged into the computer. Uh, if we could get the next one, Tom. And basically taking all those technologies and Putting it all together, um, you know, here are the steps to basically create a Power Automate flow to import a paper form into iTrack. So the first step is basically to use iTrack to create a new form type, or I think it's also known as a process flow um, that you'll be importing to into the system. The next step um, would, be able, would be to go into Power Automate, go to the AI Builder section, and create an AI builder model. And the next step after that would be to train it using a number of your paper forms. You actually need a minimum of five forms um, in order to train that AI builder model. But of course, more is better because it'll be able to be a little bit more accurate. Um, the third step would be to create a new web UI flow and record the process of filling out your iTrack form using the Chrome web browser. Um, once you've done that, you may need to tweak the flow a little bit depending on how it's set up and then you'd want to add some input parameters that will be replaced with dynamic values and those would be the values that would be pulled out of the out of your form uh, the next step would be able to create sort of the full power automate flow and choose a trigger for it there are quite a few different types of triggers available you know a lot of them are related to those other services that i touched on before but a few a few examples of triggers or ways that you could fire off a flow um, with an image are when a file is created in a folder in SharePoint, or when a file is created in OneDrive, or even when a new email arrives in Office 365 Outlook, it can basically trigger off a flow based on the attachment in that email. The next step would be to add a predict action. Um, this would be uh, using your AI builder model um, to recognize the data from the form. And then uh, UI flow for the web action, which would basically handle the inputting of the data into the iTrack form. And then once all that is set up, you just trigger the flow and fire it off. And just in case there'd be any issues with that flow, there's a sort of a power, powerful interface to you know, view all the steps and inputs and outputs for the actions in that flow, just in case you need that information to troubleshoot anything. 
And so what we'll be doing now is showing a demo of the full process to set all of this up and a demo of importing uh, paper form into iTrack. Go ahead, Tom. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to create a Power Automate flow to import paper forms to iTrack. This process makes use of three powerful technologies available for Microsoft. The first one is Power Automate, formerly known as Microsoft Flow, which lets you create automated workflows to implement business processes. The second technology we're using is AI Builder. This is a tool that allows businesses to harness the power of AI without requiring specialized coding or data science skills. The third technology is robotic process automation. This helps you automate manual processes in desktop or web-based applications. Um, the first step of this process is basically to create the form type in iTrack for the type of form that you want to import. This is basically the digital version of the form you want to import. I've created a sample one here, a simple incident form. This uh, contains the date and time that the incident occurred, the employee that recorded, reported the incident, the employee that was involved in the incident, the location, and the details. And it use a, uses a couple different types of controls um, that are available through iTrack, and it's, it's good for the demo here to see a, different type, a few different types of controls uh, being used and automated. Um, once you've created the simple incident form, um, the next um, step is to basically create and train the AI builder model. Uh, this can be done right from the Power Automate interface. To get to it, you click on AI builder, build, and then once it loads in, you select the type of model it is that you want to create. Um, for this example here, we use the form processing model because we want it to be able to process those paper, paper forms and extract data from them. Um, I've already created a model here, so I'm just going to jump to that quickly. Um, I, this is basically a form processing model for the simple incident form. Um, you can see here um, an example of one of the training documents. Um, you do need a number of documents available, uh, actually a minimum of five, in order to train the AI builder model. Um, this is just like a, an, an image of one of those documents. Um, once you've finished training the AI Builder model, you're presented with a page that lets you go through and customize the automatically detected fields or select and deselect ones based on what it is that you need to be imported from that form. And this uh, model here, you can see the selected fields or the occurred date and time, the reporting employee, the involved employee, the location, and the details. Um, once you finish creating the, the AI Builder model, the next step is to basically cre um, create a web UI flow that will automate the entering of the data into iTrack using um, an automated version of the Chrome web browser. I have one that's created here as well, but um, when you are initially creating one, you have the ability to record a flow. So you can basically create a new UI flow um, and then, you know, start recording the, the process of going through an iTrack form, filling out all the fields. Um, once you finish doing that, you'll end up with something like what you see here. Um, the first step here you can see here is basically opening the URL to the form that you want, want to enter data to. Um, after that, it basically clicks on the field with the occurred date and time and basically types the value into that. What you see here is a defined variable. So what this means is that this will be populated by a dynamic value, which will be the data that's uh, passed into this step from the AI builder, which will detect it and extract it from your form. And uh, basically the next step we see here is selecting the first employee field, which is you know the employee that reported the incident. And again, we want to select that employee based on a variable that's passed into this step. Same with the second um, employee label, which will be the employee that's involved in the incident. Um, the next one is basically clicking on the location label, you know, setting the location and typing the information into it, and then saving and closing that location pop up. And the final um, set, uh, field for entering the data is the details field that basically just clicks on that field and will type the data into it automatically. Once all the data has been entered, the save link is clicked to save the form, and then the web browser is closed. 
In order to tie all of this together, we're going to, uh, or, or you would need to create a power automate flow. In this example, I've already created a flow here, so we'll just open that up and edit it. So here in the first step of the flow, I currently have, have it set up to manually trigger a flow. So what, what that means is I basically just upload one of the you know scans or images of a form and that will fire off the flow and you know process the document that I've uploaded. However, there are quite a lot of different triggers that you can use in order to trigger a flow. Um, a few examples of those are you know when a file is created in a folder in SharePoint or when a file is created in OneDrive or when an email arrives in Outlook 365, in Office 365 Outlook. And uh, there, there's a lot of ways that let you sort of have this flow uh, trigger automatically just by like copying images over, or sending an image to an email address or something like that. So there's, there's quite a lot of different triggers available and it offers a lot of flexibility into how you're going to get your forms into this flow in order to be ad automatically added into iTrack. Um, once you have your trigger set up for your flow, you can drag and drop another step. In this case, it's the prediction step. Um, this uses that model that we previously created in the AI builder. And basically what it will do is it'll go through the image that has come from the previous step in the flow. It'll recognize the different fields and extract the data for each of the fields. Once that's done, the next step is called, and that's basically run a UI flow for the web. Um, this uses the UI flow that we created previously and uses the Google Chrome web browser. The run mode is attended. Attended basically means that it will run while you're logged into the computer and you'll see it actually open up and go through the process of entering all the data into the form. There is also an unattended mode available where you can have it just run automatically in the background without any input or seeing any of the, the stuff that's going on. Um, the first field that we have here is the date time field. I've wrapped it in a function to basically format the date and time in a format that you know the iTrack form is looking for. Um, I, this is the employee um, that reported the incident. Um, I've just um, wrapped it in some code to clean up a little bit of the data that comes in. Same with the uh, employee that was involved in the incident. And you can see the location and details fields just take the value that's you know, pulled straight from the form by the, by the AI builder action. Um, basically, once we have all of our actions set up, the next step is to actually run the flow. In this example, I'm going to choose that I'll perform the trigger action, which in this case is just uploading an image. Um, just so you can take a look and see the image that's being uploaded. This is a sample version, sample paper version of the iTrack incident form with some fairly messy printing just so it gives the AI builder a, a, a little bit of work to do to see how well it can pull the information out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this image to my flow now. And I'm going to select the document type. It's a JPEG image, and then I will go to run flow. Once your flow is running, you can go to the flow runs page. And what this will do is it'll actually give you a live view of what is happening with your flow. So you can see how it's running, how fast each step, to, how fast each step is going. And once it hits the UI flow, um, you'll see a window pop up. This is basically running the UI web flow, which is automating the input of the data with Chrome. And the source for this data, again, is that image. Uh, it's been extracted. Uh, the information has been extracted from that image using AI Builder. And it's pulled out the information on which fields have which data. And it's basically just going through and automatically populating it for you. And once it's finished uh, entering all the information, it saved the form and closed the window. Um, one thing that's actually very powerful about this flow runs page as well is that it lets you track all the inputs and outputs that have gone into and out of each of your steps. So if you're having any problems with your flow or something's not quite working correctly, you can view all of that information here. So if we go to the UI flow for the web, you can see all the inputs here. Um, you know, the web browser, you know, the date time field, the reported by employee involved, the location, the details and basically the outputs from that step as well that can go into other steps as well if you do need additional flows. Um, this 
pretty much covers all the steps of you know setting up an automated flow to import paper forms to iTrack. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you do have any questions or are interested in setting something like this up for your environment, environment, uh, please reach out to your iTrack consultant. I guess uh, before we continue, there's a question from Christy. I think Tiani can answer this. Uh, do the scan documents have to be separate, or can you have multiple forms in a single file? Um, I believe you have to have each form in a separate file. Um, I don't believe. Uh, um, there's any functionality um, to basically split up multiple pages. Um, so yeah, if you do have it in multiple documents, I would recommend splitting it up and then sort of fire each separate um, file into the AI Builder one by one or or in a batch. Like you could probably copy a group of files to a certain location and then have the flow trigger on all of those files. Cool. Thanks, Dan. No problem. Yeah. That's a good question, and obviously right now before we continue on, if people have additional questions, this is probably a good time to ask. So if anybody thinks of anything else, feel free to chime in. Um, otherwise, what you saw uh, essentially can be summarized that, you know, it's got the ability to scan, recognize text, uh, which is quite good at handwriting. You know, it's going to depend on the messiness of it, obviously. Um, map to the forms, populate those forms, create on-demand uh, calls or batch solutions, and then once that data is captured, uh, it's instantly available for other actions, for reporting, querying. It could be uh, data from iTrack, so it can tie to your Power BI. It could, data could be sent elsewhere. So once you've captured it, it's obviously provided you uh, great um, on-demand live information. So uh, what are the benefits of something like this? Well, obviously, uh, once you've built it up, it saves you time versus something like manual data entry. That obviously leads to uh, money savings. Uh, it gives you that near instant access to data, which oftentimes with paper is impossible. It populates iTrack directly. So again, that handles uh, the reporting side quite nicely. Uh, it allows you to discard old paper so you don't have to retain it for as long. Uh, the reporting gets better because it just adds to your data set and then gets there quicker. Uh, and you get a more complete view of your entire eco data system. So if you've got a paper process, it doesn't have to be disjointed from the rest of the things where maybe you're using other software to capture information. You can bring all this all in. Uh, that in, in turn will improve your decision making capability, right? Be better data leads to better decision making. Everybody knows that. And the other thing that it also does that people don't realize is that when you don't have those cumbersome manual steps, it frees up people to do more meaningful or more valuable work, right? And that's very big. You don't want your decision makers, your brain trust, uh, dealing with any kind of manual steps if you don't have to. So examples where we think this could be used uh, in, uh, in terms of, you know, where people are with different ways that they have paper interacting in their system. So uh, for examples where people are filling out a paper form and then maybe doing double entry later, uh, you would eliminate that. Uh, it also eliminate people filling out paper and then giving that paper to a data entry person for that person to do at some point in the future. Um, it eliminates the, the need to do a paper form and then uh, scan it and email it to management. You can bypass all that. Um, you can get rid of a pile of old forms that you maybe never digitized. So the, uh, it's great for both uh, accumulating historical reporting uh, or, you know, uh, do some form of archiving. And also if you have auditing requirements, again, paper is harder to, to present to auditors. So this is a solution for that. Uh, and it helps you combine data islands together. So oftentimes paper process is kind of an isolated thing on its own. And with a process like this, you can bring everything together into one pool of data. For companies that have different offices, sites, location, um, and maybe one group does everything on mobile already because they've got good internet connections or uh, good phone data connections. And then maybe you have another site uh, that does things on paper because they have no internet or no phone connections. So you can have different locations operating differently, yet still bring that data together into one source. And obviously there's probably more ways of doing this in a, in a batch fashion uh, than we're even thinking of at this point. So however that works, right, um, sort of batching makes things more efficient. 
So question is how how feasible is all this, right? And it's nice to see a demo, and uh, but realistically, you know, how could you translate this to a normal scenario? So we think that based on what we've seen and what we've tested, that's very feasible. It got, it came out of Microsoft Beta, so it is a real viable tool. And we're making that assumption based on sort of the demo that we showed, right? You scan some sort of paper, it goes to a mapped dive track form, which is done beforehand. It recognizes the text or the handwriting, it populates uh, form or fields, and then you go to reporting, right? So being able to access those data points, if, if that's kind of the scenario that we're talking about, we think that's quite feasible. Other scenarios that maybe we're not thinking about or we didn't demo would obviously need some further scoping. And because this is a Microsoft toolkit, it's designed to be almost plug and play, right? You need you need some technical ability to make these uh, processes play together, but because it is all part of the same Microsoft toolkit and we're not uh, drawing in some third sort of third party tool uh, middleware to make this happen, it does uh, work quite nicely in that regards. And as the tools get used more, Microsoft will obviously develop more features and we'll think about different ways that we can leverage those features as well. So there will be other types of scenarios that maybe we didn't present in this demo that will uh, rear uh, an opportunity. So the kind of the last bit is obviously for there's going to be some customers that are going to be quite keen uh, to get their hands on this. Uh, you know, they want to see with themselves, they want to play with it. Um, so there's a few things that obviously would have to happen as part of that. We'd have to uh, either guide you or you'd have to install the tools. You'd have to figure out the licensing and there would have to be some amount of training. So we think we can obviously help with that. Uh, and um, I don't know, Chan, is, is there anything else that you want to add to this kind of this bit here? Um, no, I don't think I have uh, anything else really to add at this point. Though I, I did see a question I think was asked in the chat. Okay. I didn't quite see all of it. <laughs> all right, let's look at it here. So the questions were from Darren. Um, what are the multilingual <laughs> translation capabilities? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, that is something that I did look into. Um, there is actually a Microsoft Translator action that you can add to uh, Power Automate Flow, and this will actually let you translate text across multiple languages. Um, this could be, you know, done automatically as one of the steps where it pulls the text out of the out of your form using the AI tool, and then that text could be converted to another language, and then it could, that could be the the text that's entered into your iTrack form. I don't know off the top of my head uh, which languages it supports, but if it's a you know Microsoft Translator component, I would assume that it would support most of the, the more popular um, languages um, that people would need um, in order to use this tool. Cool. And then I don't know which mark this is, but uh, he says you need a minimum of five training documents, but more is better. Is there a way to see how much uh, better the prediction is getting with each additional training doc added? So some sort of trend with, I guess, the AI and, uh -huh. you know, okay, uh, well, it's well, catching on to the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, a lot of what the the training focuses on is the, more the fields on your form rather than what text is in the fields on your form. And it's mostly used to for the AI builder model to figure out basically where your data is on your form. So you know you might have uh, you know a certain text field that's on the top left of your form or in the middle of your form, you might have a you know, a list of items that you need to tally up or something like that. And basically what will happen is after you go through that training process, um, the, the training screen will show you the results of that and you'll have the ability to sort of identify any fields that the AI builder might, might have missed. Or if you want to, you know, customize, you know, the size of the field or, or, or you know, which text, which block of text or how much of the text to include, you can trigger that there. And then you have the ability to basically select which fields you want to include and which fields you want to skip. So it's it's very customizable, I guess, after you've done the training. And if you want to tweak and tailor it a little bit to how you want it to work, you can definitely do that. And then um, as for the text recognition itself, um, you know, this is something I know that Microsoft has been working on for quite a long time across, you know, a lot of its different technologies over the years. So um, with that form, uh, the sample form I did with the messy writing, it was, uh, you know, it got everything like pretty much perfect, except I think it added like one extra letter on there. 
Um, so as, as long as the writing isn't super, super messy, it should be usually pretty good at, you know, uh, having a fairly high accuracy when it's extracting your data from the forms. Hope that answers your question. If not, then just feel free to either unmute your mic and ask for a follow up or just message us in the chat box. Yeah, and while we wait to see if any questions come up for people that are interested in learning a little bit more about uh, Power Automate, the session that's right after this, uh, the new iTrack workflow engine with Diane and Malik would cover some of that as well. So if you're interested in seeing more applications of that same uh, tool, uh, that would be a good one to jump on as well. So I think we'll give it another couple of minutes to see if people come up with questions, but otherwise, uh, if you don't have any questions, thanks for attending. Check out the rest of the conference schedule. And uh, if you think of questions down the line, you're more than welcome to send them our way.